My name is Matthew Rozell. I'm a teacher at Hudson Falls High School. I've been teaching for 29 years plus, and I love my job. I love my students. But more importantly, I love history. So I started my project shortly after I graduated from college with a degree in history, went into teaching, got a teaching job, and began to notice that kids didn't know too much about history. You know, we started a World War II project with just my regular 10th grade classes, and it grew and it became more popular, and by the end of the last century, um, in the beginning of the 2000s, we started a dedicated World War II class for seniors. Um, I taught it as an upper level type of class, and students would actually go out themselves and conduct interviews themselves. We recorded them, videotape, the old uh, videotape VCR machines, and I used to send the tapes home with the kids for homework and we would work on transcriptions. We got them all typed out. We figured out where places were and what, where battles happened. And then when the internet came around, we started to post them on our World War II Living History website. The website got a lot of hits. A lot of people were interested in reading the stories. They came from all over the world. And then um, I interviewed a veteran who was in our hometown, who was a tank commander during uh, the European campaign. And he told me about a train that he and his um, fellow tank commander came across in 1945 in April, which was at the end of World War II in Nazi Germany. And they didn't realize it at the time they had liberated a concentration camp transport from Bergen-Belsen. And they actually took photographs of what they saw that day. And then four years later, I heard from a grandmother in Australia who had been a seven-year-old girl on the train who saw the dramatic photographs of the day of her liberation. But she told me that she found the, the pictures and the stories that I put on the internet and she got a hold of the tank commander who lived in California, George Gross. Talked to him on the telephone. She called him up from Australia. And it was an amazing conversation for the two of them. And that started the whole thing where people began to come. People who were on the train, who are now adults, or grandparents, started to seek out the liberators because they found the photographs on our school website. It was very organic the way it all unfolded. I would open up my email inbox and there would be another message from a new survivor, somebody that I wasn't aware of before. These people are coming to me individually. They're not aware of each other for the most part before finding my website on the internet, for example. Um, so it's, it's just kind of unfolding. They came up on a nice fall day in 2007. They came to the high school in front of a thousand students and the survivors gave their testimony and they got to meet their actual American liberator. And it was a great experience for everybody, the soldier, the survivors, but also especially the students to learn more about the Holocaust and how important it was. You know, the whole time I taught the class for the past 16 or so years, 15 maybe, um, I always told them that someday there would be a book. And I did have a book with 30 of the veterans who were interviewed, um, many by me, but also many by my students. And they're entirely credited in the first book on the Pacific War. We have probably 200 and 25 interviews, I think, all of which are also housed in the New York State Military Museum archives. Which are also, uh, most of them are uploaded onto YouTube now. There's a YouTube channel for the Military Museum in New York State. There's three or four more books about World War II from the eyes of the veterans that are going to be coming out in the next few years. And that's going to be uh, work that myself and my students did. So we're actually going to publish and keep the history alive.